Okay. Um, let's try like that. Um, so yeah, the next uh, speaker is Chelsea Bartram. That uh, she's going to talk us about DM Radio, DM Radio design and development at the briefing. So please uh, go on. Great. Uh, thank you so much. And thanks to the organizers for having me here today. I apologize for having to do this remotely. Unfortunately, I contracted COVID at some point. Um, so I'm uh, working from my hotel. But um, as uh, the uh, organizer said, uh, this is my talk titled DM Radio uh, Design and Development, a debriefing. Now we've heard a lot about um, Axion Hilloscope so far. Um, mostly coming from sort of the resonant cavity community. Um, and so of course, these telescopes are using the photon coupling, which um, as per the snow mass conversation that Gray Ripka discussed earlier, um, is thought to be an excellent channel for discovery. Um, so this is leveraging the axion to uh, photon conversion via a strong magnetic field. Um, so another word for that is the inverse Primakov effect. Um, and of course, the sort of two parameters of interest are the axion mass which is directly proportional to the photon, um, conversion photon, um, and then the uh, GA gamma gamma uh, axion to photon coupling factor. Um, but axion heliscope doesn't necessarily have to refer to these resonant cavities. Um, so I'm going to change gears now um, because I'd like to talk about lower frequency uh, heliscope searches. So the heliscope only implies that you have this magnetic field and you're leveraging the inverse Primakov effect. Um, and so we've all seen uh, this plot many, many times throughout the course of our discussion today, um, over the past couple of weeks. Uh, this is uh, the axion photon coupling uh, versus the axion mass parameter space. Um, and indeed, as I said, we heard much about resonant cavities earlier. So this is experiments such as ADMX um, and Haystack. Um, and now I'd like to uh, change gears again and oops, uh, discuss the lower end of this parameter space. So this is what we call the lumped element, uh, lumped element regime. Um, sometimes you also hear a uh, quasi-static regime. Um, and so in this situation, we're talking about LC circuits, not resonant cavities. Um, and of course, in the photon channel, what we're looking at is essentially the modification of Ampere's law. Um, and so of course, the axions uh, modify Maxwell's equations. Um, and in the cavity regime, the uh, Compton wavelength of the axion is more or less on the same scale as the uh, detector uh, length scale, so the characteristic scale of the detector. Um, but in the uh, lower frequency regime, the quasi-static regime, this wavelength is much, much larger than the characteristic length scale of the detector. Um, so this is um, uh, the experiments I'm going to focus on uh, today is dark matter radio, which falls into this category. And so what we're looking for with these experiments is we're looking for basically an effective current. Um, and so you can see it here, um, this is the uh, final term in the modified Maxwell's uh, equations for Ampere's law. Um, and this effective current is oscillating with a frequency which is directly proportional to the axion mass. Um, and then it has some amplitude, which is, of course, related to the dark matter density, as well as the axion, <coughs> excuse me, photon coupling. And so we um, search for this effective current, uh, which is sourced in an applied magnetic field. Um, we use some sort of pickup loop to detect that current. And then that is uh, subsequently read out via a current sensor. Um, and some sort of data acquisition system. And so in our system, we'll be using squids. <laughs> um, the DM radio collaboration um, is uh, somewhat smaller than some of the other groups that you uh, have heard of for the course of the past couple of weeks. So you can see a list of collaborators here. Um, so we have a number of affiliated institutions, including uh, Slack and Stanford, MIT, uh, Cal State East Bay, Berkeley, Princeton, um, you can see the, the full list uh, down here at the bottom. And so um, I want to highlight sort of two key design principles for dark matter radio. Um, and when I say dark matter radio, this is actually sort of referring to a full program of experiments, and you'll hear about those throughout the course of my talk. 
Um, but I want to also emphasize that DM radio uh, from here on out will be a resonant telescope. Um, and the two key design principles uh, are that the axion current inductively couples to a tunable LC circuit. And then we have to um, find a way to increase our scan rate, um, as is always an issue with our resonant telescopes. Um, and we're going to do that by increasing our bandwidth. Um, so you can see here, uh, this is the scan rate <laughs> for um, an axion. Uh, for axion telescopes um, in this uh, lumped element category. Um, I apologize for the intermittent coughing. Um, so in the first part of this uh, scan rate equation, you can see that there is um, a factor related to the signal to noise, and then you have all of the components that are related to the dark matter itself. So this is the axion to two photon coupling, the dark matter density, an axion quality factor. And then there's this other term here, um, which uh, relates to sort of the design primers of your experiment. Um, and you probably notice some similarities between this and the resonant telescopes that were discussed earlier, the, the cavity telescopes. Um, and, uh, and that's true. Um, this, uh, <laughs> an unfortunate fact about telescopes is that this magnetic field uh, term always plays a very critical role. Um, but um, uh, you can see there are a number of other factors uh, here as well. Um, so. Moving on, um, as I stated before, um, one key component of the search is that uh, we increase our bandwidth in order to increase our scan speed. Um, and so at these frequencies, um, you can see the different types of noise we are dealing with uh, shown um, in both of these plots. Um, so there's sort of three critical components, and those include thermal and zero point noise, uh, which is shown here in red. Um, that's followed by imprecision noise. So this is basically um, the noise at the output of the amplifier. And then finally, back action noise, which is uh, noise that uh, essentially back acts on um, the, the resonator itself. <laughs> Um, and so we can kind of uh, adjust these uh, depending on how we couple to our resonator such that we can increase our sensitivity bandwidth. And so that's what's being shown here on these slides. Um, so if we, we can increase our bandwidth by decreasing our imprecision noise, so this is this green uh, line, at the expense of increasing the uh, so-called back action noise, so that's shown in red. Um, and so that's key to uh, achieving our scanning goals, our, our scan rate goals. Um, now, I mentioned before that um, DM radio is uh, not referring to a particular experiment. It's actually referring to an entire suite of experiments and a collaboration that is working to um, realize that, that whole suite of experiments. Um, so uh, DM radio came about through the merging of uh, two groups. So there is DM radio Pathfinder, um, which uh, uh, performed a hidden photon search, and then the Abracadabra experiment, which was a broadband axion search. Um, and so these groups kind of merged together recently, um, and we have sort of outlined our future experimental goals, um, which are shown here. So um, the first uh, uh, stage experiment, which uh, is currently ongoing, is called DM Radio 50 Liter. So I'll go through um, some slides discussing that. Um, this will run. Um, uh, uh, sorry, this will be used uh, about a one Tesla toroto magnet. Um, it will be a sensor test bed for uh, quantum protocols, and then it will um, use a dilution refrigerator. Um, and I've shown a link at the bottom uh, if you're curious uh, to read more about that. Um, this will be followed by DM radio meter cubed, um, which will, uh, which is in the design phase um, currently, but uh, it will use a five Tesla soil noidal magnet, um, DC squids, as well as a dilution refrigerator. Um, this is funded by a uh, so-called uh, DMNI initiative, uh, which similarly funds uh, ADMX EFR. Um, and then finally, I'll progress to the um, last uh, experiment shown on the right-hand side, which is DM Radio BET. Um, this is in the far, far future. Um, this is looking towards using uh, much higher field magnets, um, as well as uh, different uh, quantum techniques and once again, uh, you can look into the, um, the article uh, shown here if you're interested about reading more. 
Um, so I'll begin by explaining the DM Radio 50 liter experiment. Um, this is intended to cover the five kilohertz to five megahertz um, region of the parameter space. So this corresponds to um, <laughs> about 20 um, PEV to 20 nano EV. Um, this will serve as a prototyping platform, so a testbed for quantum readout technologies, and it will implement a toroidal magnet with a field strength of about one Tesla. So this requires about 140 amps uh, super, in a superconducting magnet. Um, the uh, base temperature is intended to reach about uh, 20 millitesla, or, sorry, millikelvin uh, typo. And the intended sensitivity goal is uh, GA gamma gamma of about five times 10 to the minus 15 inverse GeV. Now I'd like to um, just walk you gradually through uh, the process by which DM radio 50 liter will work. Um, it requires a bit of visualization. So I have a few diagrams here. So the first uh, part of the process is that an axion induces an AC current in a static applied magnetic field. So this is this term B naught. So the static field is applied by the toroidal magnet. And then you have your effective current uh, induced by the axion um, oscillating within that uh, region as well. That AC current in turn induces a poloidal RF field, uh, RF magnetic field, which is shown here in black. So this is uh, this term BA. And finally, that poloidal RF B field induces screening currents, which I call R I return here in a superconducting sheath. So this is shown here in red. Um, and so that superconducting sheath surrounds the magnet. And then that current is in turn sensed by a pickup loop that is coupled to an LC resonator. Um, so that's shown here in light blue. And this uh, current is then um, uh, picked up and amplified by squids. And so to give you um, a uh, sort of a 3D CAD rendering um, of the experiment, I've shown the slide here. Um, you can see the superconducting niobium sheath. So this um, shields the resonator from lossy magnet materials, and it is intended to have a resistive element to dissipate currents induced by ramping the field. Um, so that design is uh, currently underway. Um, it also includes uh, this, uh, we also have this pickup loop in the zero field region here. Um, and um, this uh, is intended to be separated out from the uh, region where there's magnetic field. So one of the advantages of having a toroidal magnet instead of a solenoidal magnet is that you can sort of completely separate out um, where the axion current is sourced and where you actually do the pickup. Um, this toroidal magnet uh, is um, pretty much fully designed. So we're having um, the various components uh, manufactured right now. I'll go into that in my subsequent slides. Um, and then uh, finally, of course, this is a resonant detected detection system. Um, so we use a tunable LC circuit that connects to a squid. Um, and so uh, here you can see a tuning capacitor. And we anticipate resonator cues close to about 10 to the six from preliminary tests. Um, uh, the cryostat design is also underway. We've been working with a company called 49 to design the cryostat. And you can see um, a depiction of this here. Um, we already have a blue forest dilution refrigerator, which is shown on the left-hand side um, in both the uh, CAD drawing or in the technical drawing, as well as the uh, photograph. And then um, the actual DM radio experiment, so that the toroidal magnet will sit in this region, um, innermost region shown in uh, green with the gray hatch here. Um, so this is where our toroidal magnet and sheath will go. And of course, uh, as I stated earlier, um, we intend to reach a base temperature of 20 millikelvin for the uh, for the detector. 
Now, um, as I stated earlier, the magnet design is um, nearly complete, and we're actually in the process of um, uh, acquiring several components uh, that go into the magnet design. So we've been working with a company called Superconducting Systems Inc., or SSI. Um, you can see uh, a 3D CAD rendering of the magnet on the right-hand side with uh, small scale. Um, this toroidal magnet is anticipated to reach a field strength of about one Tesla and run about 140 amps through it. Um, it consists of these aluminum mandrel wedges. So here you can see um, uh, this entire uh, toroid is composed of these individual aluminum pieces that are sort of uh, assembled together uh, to form a toroid. And then um, there is a superconducting wire wrap that goes around the entire uh, entire. Um, assembled uh, device. So um, currently we are in the process of having these aluminum mandrel wedges machined. So actually those were machined very recently, just about last week. Um, and the completed wedges were shipped um, to SSI uh, where they've been testing out the superconducting wire wrap. Uh, so it's a very exciting time. Um, the two, the toroid actually breaks into two separate pieces, um, two halves. And then there's a dielectric spacer in between. Uh, so um, we have to um, ensure that SSI can fully assemble this and then test it in their 4K cryostat. Um, in addition to uh, the magnet, there's of course um, quantum electronics and the readout chain and the DAC. So this is all under development as well. We will use a two-stage uh, squid readout. Um, my uh, Collaborators are working on a calibration loop um, that can be inserted either into the magnet or on top. Um, and we're exploring the possibility of testing new quantum protocols with 50 liter. Um, one example of this is the use of radio frequency quantum up converters. Um, so if you're curious about those, I've included a link um, to an archive paper uh, that was written by several of my collaborators. Um, and finally, the data acquisition system is in development. Um, this is a uh, work in progress between uh, people at MIT and people at Slack and Stanford as well as and Berkeley. Um, now, as I said, we're uh, at an exciting point in time because um, we're actually uh, just getting some of the components in. So um, we had about 138 aluminum wedges for the magnet machined and shipped off just last week. Um, here's a picture of one of my collaborators, Maria Simonovska, holding one of the wedges. Um, the wire wrap of the magnet will begin soon. Um, the design of the sheath has uh, been more or less finalized. Um, and we are continuing our iteration um, with 49, the cryostat design company, as well as SSI. And so our goal is ultimately to be taking data with 50 liter um, by 2024. And so you can see in the picture um, where this experiment will go. Um, you can see our Blue Force dilution refrigerator, which has already been installed, um, and the space in which we'll put the cryostat. And so um, 50 liter, uh, presuming everything goes well, um, intends to cover this uh, part here, shown in yellow, of the axion parameter space. Moving on, um, beyond 50 liter, we'll, we intend to pivot towards uh, something called DM radio meter cubed. Um, so this is in the earlier design phases at the moment, uh, but uh, it, it will cover the frequency range from about uh, 10 to 200 megahertz. So this corresponds um, to about 40 nano EV to 1.2 micro EV. And it will cover 30 to 200 megahertz at DFSC sensitivity. So we're really going into the QCD axion band there. Um, which is very exciting. Um, DM radio meter cube will use a solenoidal magnet with about uh, with a 4.7 Tesla magnetic field. And it will also use um, what we call coaxial copper pickup structure, um, which is intended to work with this solenoidal design. Um, and finally, it will have a 20 millikelvin base temperature, just like 50 liter. Now, once again, I'll walk uh, everyone through the uh, concept by which DM radio meter cubed works. Um, so it's very similar, but you have to take into account the different geometries. Um, so 
Uh, first, you have an axion inducing an AC current in a static magnetic field. So this time your magnetic field is um, uh, running uh, the length of the uh, cylinder. So it's in the vertical direction. Um, this uh, axion current then induces an RF magnetic field, uh, not shown in this picture, but this induces screening currents on the surface of a copper coaxial sheath. Um, so this copper coaxial sheath, you can see uh, here in black. And then finally, the screening currents may be sensed by a DC squid coupled to a tunable LC circuit. Um, and so ultimately the solenoidal geometry um, is preferred for frequencies greater than uh, 50 megahertz. And that's due to the fact that um, uh, one has to avoid parasitic capa uh, capacitance at frequencies above this. And so to give you a sense of what this experiment will actually look like, um, here we have our superconducting solenoidal magnet um, and a 20 millikelvin copper coaxial pickup. Um, this also uh, shows uh, the dilution refrigerator, um, a low field region uh, for the caster and squids, as well as the superconducting uh, bucking coils. And so uh, zooming in on this region, um, we recently came out with a paper which um, includes uh, this image, um, which shows sort of the magnetic field profile of that magnet. Um, so this coaxial design is optimal for meter cubed frequencies, but it entails um, some more thought than uh, perhaps one into 50 liter, or at least some different thought. Um, and so we have to consider, for example, cavity modes that could degrade sensitivity. Um, so uh, in order to uh, accommodate for this, uh, meter cubed will use six co copper coaxial pickups of varying heights. And so um, if you're interested in our recent study on this, um, you can look at this paper that was recently published uh, by Al Shirari. Um, it's called uh, Electromagnetic Modeling and Science Reach of DM Radio Meter Cubed. Um, it's on the archive. And um, this uh, explains the uh, various coaxes that we use and how uh, we change those out to achieve the uh, sensitivity, the desired sensitivity. Um, so meter cubed was selected by the DOE DMNI program. Um, Frederica mentioned this before um, in the context of ADMX EFR. So uh, of course, um, it's not entirely clear when those funds will begin falling, but um, this is the uh, intent is to have this uh, funded by DMNI. It will be cited at the Slack National Lab. Um, so here you can get a sense of what the setup will look like. Um, we've so far performed extensive modeling using COMSOL and um, we have, uh, we will be learning uh, a great deal from DM Radio uh, 50 liter, presumably, um, and all of that will feed into the design and development of meter cubed. And so, um, Provided all goes well, the projected sensitivity for meter cubed is this region here uh, shown in uh, turquoise. Now, finally, I'd like to just uh, briefly mention DM radio gut. Um, so DM radio gut is the much longer feature. Um, and so it's, um, uh, we're not quite uh, fully in the design uh, phase of DM radio gut yet, but we have a sense of what uh, parameters we would use and what uh, sort of our sensitivity goals would be. Um, so um, at that point, we're sort of looking towards uh, state-of-the-art magnetic fields. Um, so it's uh, notable that um, Niobium 310 and Rebco magnets can actually reach field strengths as high as about, of about 16 Tesla. <laughs> um, we're looking at volumes of about 10 meter cubes, meters cubed, um, as well as quality factors of about two <laughs> times 10 to the seven. Um, we're assuming we can hit base temperatures of about 10 millikelvin or so. Um, so th these are sort of target values. And then here you can see um, state of the art. Um, and then we're uh, of course going to continue with um, implementing whatever uh, quantum techniques work best uh, in 
uh, 50 liter. Um, so uh, whatever we can do to uh, try to sneak below the standard quantum limit. Um, and then we're looking at integration time of about 6.2 years. And so if all goes well, then we intend to exclude uh, this part shown in red. Uh, so this is our sensitivity protection for um, DM radio gut. And so the schedule looking forward looks something like this. Um, so today, here we are uh, around <laughs> um, 2023. Um, so we're right in the middle of 50 liter designing construction. So we're anticipating uh, really having the construction moving and then data taking coming online at some point in 2024. Um, and at the moment, we're in the middle of the design phase for meter cubed. Um, so it's a very exciting time and we're really looking forward to um, future data taking operations and construction and design of larger scale uh, experiments. Okay. And on that note, I want to wrap things up. Um, so in conclusion, the DM radio program aims <laughs> to cover, excuse me, uh, five kilohertz uh, to 200 megahertz. So this is a 0.02 nano EV um, up to about 0.8 micro EV. Um, the meter cubed and gut experiments will probe the QCD axion range. Um, so that's very exciting. DM radio 50 liter uh, will begin data taking in about 2024. And meter cubed will begin data taking in about 2026. Um, and gut is in the longer time scale. So we're looking at like 10 years, but it's in development right now. So thank you everybody for listening to my talk. Um, it's been wonderful, uh, a wonderful opportunity to be invited to this conference today. So thanks, I'll stop now for questions. Thank you very much. Any questions to Michelle Chief? I have one. Um, uh, I didn't catch, uh, well, what are these partial times as assume for the projections of uh, um, 50 liters and, and, and the meter cube projections? Sorry, I, I didn't catch the question. Could you so so uh, yeah, I was wondering the the, the assume uh, exposure time, data taking data taking time. Um, the assumed data taking time. Okay. Um, yeah. So you can actually get a sense of that from the visual. Um, so <laughs> presuming we start data taking for fifty liter in twenty twenty four, um, approximately you know two two to three years. Um, so yeah, that should give you a sense. Okay. I don't, I don't know if that answers your question. If you wanted um, specifically, uh, you know, that doesn't say integration time so much, but that includes downtime and so on. Okay, the, the, this was assumed when, when calculating the projections, uh, the physics reach that okay. you should be calling. The physics reach. Okay. Yeah, so, so that accounts for Right, this this whole period of time. Okay, thank you. Any other question? <laughs> no. Okay, if not, uh, we thank Chelsea again. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And um, before leaving.